it's time to install some programs on our Linux Mint installation. So we're not just gonna do a basic install. I'm not gonna just pull up the software center and say, click install. It should work perfect, because any moron can do that. Yes, I'll go ahead and show that just so you can see it works. But we're gonna go into a lot of other ways to install programs. So there's a whole variety of ways to install programs. And I wanna explain when you search out a specific program that may or may not be in the software store, how does that work? How do you install that program? The only thing I'm not gonna cover in today's video is games. Uh, that's gonna be a separate video on its own because there's so much that you can do with gaming. And yes, you can use other things other than Steam and that type of thing, but we'll get into it in the gaming video. This one, I just wanted to go over all the variety of programs you can use because if a program is Linux compatible, you can install it on your Linux-based system. There are just some caveats to um, how to install it, uh, because some distributions, Linux distributions, are easier to install that program than others. Uh, some people, there's this myth out there that uh, you can't install one program on one distribution, you can't install it on another. Th that's not a thing. Usually, uh, you can build out pretty much any program on any distribution. It's just a matter of ease. So with all that said, let's not waste any time. Jump on the desktop get into installing programs. And we're gonna go through a package manager, we're gonna go over containerized installations, we're gonna go over uh, pretty much everything, even, even maybe even building from source. So we're gonna start with the beginner concepts, move all the way into expert uh, territory. So uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody out there in this video, so let's get into it. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. All right, we're gonna start on the software manager. As I said, this is the easy way to do it. Just come up into here where it says software manager, click on it, it launches. And then you just simply say, you know what, I need some Audacity. I'm gonna do some audio editing. I'll just go ahead, hit install. It'll prompt for a password, or it'll just say you need these dependencies, hit continue. And that's it. It'll just go in the background. You can go through as it does this and, and install other things through the software manager, but that's pretty simple. I mean, honestly, you, you shouldn't run into any problems. I will say there are times where you might install a program and it'll just kind of, you'll see the progress bar and then it just disappears and it says install again. That means that program failed to install and there's something else, usually a missing dependency that happens in the background that causes an issue. So uh, just be cognizant of that. If you do click install and then all of a sudden it's not installed, uh, that means you probably need to go over one of these other methods. So let's go to the next method. Let's say Audacity didn't install. How do we install that? Uh, we'll go ahead and remove Audacity and install it using another method. This method, you're gonna see a lot of how-to guides walk through um, installing. And that usually revolves around terminal. Terminal can be scary, but it's very powerful because of how quickly you can get things done. So I always recommend people to get familiar with the terminal, but I mean, that's up to you uh, because there's other methods we're gonna go over as well. But I at least wanna introduce you to the terminal and a package manager install as you're gonna see it in a lot of how-to guides on the web. So if you're in Mint or Ubuntu, uh, typically it's using the APT package manager. That's kind of a mouthful, so just know that if you ever see sudo apt install, that's what the package manager is. It's apt, or it'll say apt-git. Both do pretty much the same thing. Uh, so we'll do apt install audacity. We'll type our password in, it'll go through, grab and install everything. It's installed. As you see, that's why a lot of Linux people like the terminal because it's fast. You literally, uh, there's nothing to click. You just type one command in and then away you go. And the cool thing here is if there was a problem and I had that, uh, you know, like I was saying earlier where the install button just kind of reappeared. I was like, well, what the hell, it didn't install. 
the terminal would give you an actual error message uh, where the software centers typically don't, which is kind of unfortunate, but uh, here we go. That's, that's one way you could see an error message if you're having trouble installing something. Try apt install in the package name is the next method really to do it. So moving past that, um, let's say you go to a website and you need to download something. Now here's Caden Live, and there's a lot of different ways to install Caden Live. You have the apt image, which that's containerized storage. Anytime you see apt image, flat pack, or snap, uh, snap install, flat pack install. App image is just a, a container. Both all three are containerized storage. What that means is everything's baked into this package, meaning there's nothing else to install. And it, it typically runs on every single Linux installation in existence. It doesn't matter what distribution you're on. If it's an app image, flat pack, or snap, it typically just works. So let me demonstrate that. I'll click download of app image, and then we'll just go ahead and pull up our downloads and run that. So go to downloads. We see the Caden Live app image we just have. So we'll go to properties. And from properties, we go to permissions. And then we say allow executing of the program and hit close. Now we right click, it still says open, but we're gonna go ahead and just click it to see what happens. Uh, here is the new Caden Live version 20. It just went ahead and launched it for me. Um, but some some uh, distributions are a little different. In, in Mint's case, uh, you, you need to make sure that it is allowed to execute. So right click properties, make sure that checkbox is there. I just wanted to mention that off the get go. Um, and that's it. There is nothing to install. What happens when there's an update? and you need to update this. Well, you need to go back to the website, download the new version, and run it. So containerized storage is interesting. App image, that's basically how it works. Flat pack and snaps, you can actually update directly from them. Um, but again, that's using the terminal, and I'm not gonna get into flat pack or snaps in today's video, but if you're interested in those, I have separate videos going over flat pack and snaps and all of their syntax. By all means, go into there, do it. Um, I will just say for, for Flatpak, Mint comes with Flatpak already installed and configured. So if you go to the Flatpak website, which is flathub.org, you can actually just search for your app. Let's say we want a Discord, we can just click install and we'll just go ahead and open this. So here it is, we'll just click install and continue. And this downloads Discord and installs it. This is still using the software manager, but uh, this is kind of a combination of Flatpak and the software manager. So this is the Flatpak, but it is still using the software manager. The, when we did Audacity, it uses the package manager. This actually used Flatpak. Just know sometimes it's not in here and you can install it directly, this method or using command line. Again, if you get into the more advanced section of a flat pack uh, and you need to drop to terminal i have an entire video going over flat pack this will go ahead and install discord for us and uh launch it for all of that and that's just two different methods of going about it using flat pack and then also app image now there is a way to expand the apt command in terminal um, if you go to etc apt sources dot list dot d and we'll just do a listing right here uh, you'll see one the official package repositories but let's say you needed to add a repository you could actually create a file in here with just a couple uh, db files this is a little more complex and depending on the package uh, you might need to change this up i do highly recommend not to do this only as maybe a last resort, as I really don't like adding repositories to my package manager, as this can break your system if you're not careful. So definitely be careful of that. A lot of people say use PPAs, and if you're not sure what a PPA is, it's a, a repository made by Ubuntu. So if you're using Debian Edition, definitely don't do this. There's a good chance you're gonna break your system, as the official uh, Debian.org has an article titled Don't Break Debian, where it specifically says, don't use Ubuntu PPAs. However, if you're on Ubuntu-based Linux Mint, the regular vanilla version, not the LMDE, you can go ahead and install uh, another PPA directly in here using the terminal. 
I'm not going to show that today as I really recommend you not do this. So with that said, that is it. Uh, we are pretty much done with Linux Mint installing programs. Uh, I still have one more video to do in this series and that's going to go over gaming. There's some gaming tweaks I want to do and since we're running the Debian edition, there's going to be a couple more tweaks we need to do uh, to really make it work just as well as our Ubuntu counterpart. Some people think that Ubuntu is faster than Debian. Ubuntu is based on Debian. They just did some extra tweaks that we need to do ourselves. So I'll go into more of that in the next video. Definitely look for that down below. I'll go ahead and link to it once I'm finished with the series. And with that, uh, I'll see you in the next one.